Yes, I don't know if I'm answering the question, but the most I, I work on, on, on Matisse, about Matisse, the more I admire his uh, lucidity, his uh, consciousness, and, and the way he, he controls the reproduction of his work. It's, it's the exacting meticulousness with which he's, he, he controls his, his words, of course, and the translation of his words into, uh, for example, Aragon. Uh, he controls uh, the Aragon text, but also the material reproduction of the cutouts, but before the, draw the drawings, uh, well, uh, I think it's very important perhaps to explore <coughs> even more that, uh, that field. It occurred to me uh, that m most of the talks, and I'm thinking particularly about Anne's, uh, that much of what we're dealing with is how the artist presents himself to the public in many different ways, whether it's commercially or whether it's through writing or whether it's through the carefulness. Um, and in, Isabella showed the image of uh, Max Jacob that I mentioned that was in the special exhibition. Uh, it seemed that he, uh, Matisse was able to navigate so many different modalities in a way that Picasso ran into to difficulty to, in, when he reverted to that Angres. Uh, style. I'm curious if any of you have an, a, a notion as to why he, Matisse was able to be so, so proliferative in multivalent ways. Uh, I think there is a point we, we have also to, um, to remember that in the same day, Matisse can practice uh, drawing, he can make uh, sculptures, he can make uh, different things, all these things um, uh, um, to put together to uh, enrich so, um, as they gave uh, value uh, each other. And it gives to Matisse uh, a very uh, big uh, freedom, and he can make a lot of experimentation in uh, each uh, technique. And it that's open a lot of door. And uh, when uh, we, we this morning at the end, the um, lady who say, "Oh, there is one in the paper cut out," and uh, uh, of course we have a link with all, and it's open so so much doors. And, and we uh, uh, as each time we, we we try to understand and to to close the door and to say now we are finished on this part and we discover a new thing we make a new link and you make a, a new uh, open minding uh, about matisse just to say quickly i think it's the same with the matisse's writings and statements we we can think that everything has been told about notes of a, notes of a, notes on a paint, of a painter, sorry, of 1908 after Roger Bantajama's book, and I think we can find so much things uh, again in a, in the archives and in the journal. So uh, I agree with with you that we have so many doors to open. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, Tom, as you and some others in the room know, my wife and I uh, had a very large collection of Matisse illustrated books, and which were on exhibit at the Morgan Library about a year ago. But if you talk about proliferation, though, there was more copies of those books than any other kind of work of art, the uh, prints, lithographs, etc. For example, Charles Jolan was a, a, a um, publication of 1,200 copies, all of which were signed by Matisse, I believe. And the others were several hundred. But there's been no mention of illustrated books here today. But I think late in his life, he must have uh, design, de at least in part, wanted to produce them in large quantities so his work would be proliferated among many people. Yes, we know, for example, Thème et Variation was in, in ten, intended to uh, specifically for students of art. It was was not a cheap edition, but it was it was not a deluxe 
uh, book in the usual sense of the word, and Matisse expressly uh, intended to, to, to have the book diffused uh, largely and to, to the students, for example. <laughs> Do you think that Matisse gave himself cinquante de dessin to himself for his 50th birthday? It was published six weeks before his 50th birthday. Yes, I know, but I don't think so. I, I don't imagine he, he, he was giving... No, I don't think... Uh, I think it was, as I tried to, to, to explain, it was... Uh, a gesture. I don't know. I don't know exactly. Uh, certainly not uh, uniquement. Uh, only to to answer Picasso or to be. Of course, it's just uh, an aspect. But I don't know. Perhaps a gift for his daughter. Perhaps uh, we we never know. It's it's multiple. There are multiple reasons. Certainly. Well, uh, they, are, they answer to each other uh, during uh, most of their careers. So they look at each other and, and answering in a, in a way, yes. Yes, certainly. <laughs> this is for Ms. Terry. Um, Roger Benjamin's reading of Notes of a Painter that you referenced in your paper and just a moment ago came out of his dissertation, the dissertation he wrote for Bryn Mawr. And I just wanted to mention that there is another Bryn Mawr dissertation from 2005 that is also an interpretation of Matisse's writings. It addresses all of the writings, not just notes of a painter. The title of it is um, Color and Alienation, Matisse's Theory of Art. And I only mention it because I don't know to what extent you're going to deal with other scholars writing about Matisse's writings, but I thought you should know it exists and it might be of some use to you. And good luck on your dissertation. Thank you, Thank you so much. It's, it's uh, on my list of reading, but... Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but I didn't have the time to mention all the Matisse's works on Matisse's writings and statements, but thank you very much. about the single nude drawing. It's, it's such a curious drawing. It's not, no, but there are it's more than, than one nude in, in the... Okay, so, uh, yeah. No, no, but there, that are, particular there are many more. And, well, I, I, I could not show the whole... Not thing. that one, the other one. Yes. Um, um, yes. No. <laughs> no, I think it's... Uh, at the, at the no. beginning, it's a third or fourth. It or has fourth. a little scratching on the arm. Mm -hmm. I was curious about that. Yes. Yes, this one. The pattern on the mm -hmm. shoulder and the... Oh, it's... it's but there are the rather... It's a, the uh, the there is a quantity of drawings, not, not only those selected in, in the 50 drawings, but a lot of, of strange drawings of Antoinette in, in the nude, of the nude Antoinette. Um, I remember Fourcade when long time ago when we um, selected the drawings for the, the, uh, the exhibition in Musée National d'Art Moderne uh, well, 40 years ago, something like that. Uh, he was uh, fascinated by the drawings of Antoine at nude with the chapeau à plume. There is a lot of, of these drawings. Well, and well, I don't know. <laughs> This, the this transparent, I guess it's transparent yeah. shawl or robe yes. or something. Yes, sort of but blouse. It, but or you can't really see the, the robe. No. You can only see the marks on yes. the body, yes. and I think it's just a, a striking detail. Interesting work. Thank you. Sorry. Perhaps one more. So it's a question for John. <laughs> So have, uh, obviously you have been thinking a lot about the status of the paper cutouts and maquettes and so on. How would you consider 
the elements, the so-called elements. Exactly the way the Matisse, inter the Ma the Matisse Museum interprets them. Mm -hmm. Not as artworks, mm -hmm. as unused elements in the making of artworks. Kind of arch archives, then? An archive, yes, visual archive. Mm -hmm. Precisely okay. the way you classify it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much for participating. Thank you.